Good morning. Here we go. Yeah, it's Monday, but Pastor Rago is on the road with his family on their way to Texas. Back, to, going back, back to, Texas. to Texas. Yes, driving this time instead of flying. And yeah. with just four little ones instead of 22 of them. <laughs> so, wow. hey, that's progress. <laughs> So, uh, 22 weren't little. Ones. No, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Well. Be careful what you say. I guess I'd better. <laughs> so we're going to pick up where he left off in 1 Kings 15. And we'll sing Christ Be My Leader, because, which is number 861. Because it's talking here also, repeatedly in the book of 1 Kings, about who is following who. Ooh. So... <clears throat> Christ be my leader by night and by day Safe through the darkness for he is the way Gladly I follow my future his care Darkness is daylight when Jesus is there Christ be my teacher in ages in you, drifting or doubting, for he is the truth. Grant me to trust him, though shifting as sand. Doubt cannot daunt me when Jesus I stand. Christ be my Savior in calm and in strife. Death cannot hold me, for He is the light. Darkness or doubting, your sin and its stain can touch my salvation. With Jesus I reign. First Kings, fifteen, beginning at verse. 25. Nadab the son of Jeroboam <laughs> began to reign over Israel in the second year of Asa king of Judah, and he reigned over Israel two years. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of his father, and in his sin which he made Israel to sin. Baasha the son of Ahijah of the house of Issachar conspired against him. And Baasha struck him down at Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines. For Nadab and all Israel were laying siege to Gibbethon. So Baasha killed him in the third year of Asa king of Judah, and reigned in his place. And as soon as he was king, he killed all the house of Jeroboam. He left to the house of Jeroboam not one that breathed until he had destroyed it, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by his servant Abijah the Shilonite. It was for the sins of Jeroboam that he sinned, and that he made Israel to sin, and because of the anger to which he provoked the Lord, the God of Israel. Now the rest of the acts of Nadab and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? And there was war between Asa and Baasha, king of Israel, all their days. In Two more the, verses. In the third year of Asa, king of Judah, Baasha, the son of Ahijah, began to reign over all Israel at Tirzah, and he reigned 24 years. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of Jeroboam, and in his sin, which he, and in his sin, which he made Israel to sin. Lots of sin. Lots of sin. Yeah. So it gets confusing, doesn't it? The whole kings thing. And I remember when we were in college, we were taking old, an Old Testament course, and we were reading the entire Bible for that one quarter course, like yeah, 11 yeah, weeks. Quarter. You read the whole Bible in 11, the whole Old Testament in 11 weeks. But hey, the guy. You were racing through these kings, and we had to learn, you know, good king, good king, bad king, good king, bad king. You know? And Israel was easy because they were all bad. 
and Judah, and you had to win which ones were bad and which ones were good. They're all on the test. So you're being tested now. The, uh, the thing to look for in order to keep this straight, besides north and south, Israel and Judah, is the long ones, the long reigning kings, and then the short ones that fit in there on the opposite side. So uh, Asa was a good king, a good-ish king in the south, in Judah, for 41 years. It's a very long time. Uh, that's a long time for anybody's career, really. Mm -hmm. And for kings who are getting assassinated and having wars and all these other things, and then diseases and so on back then, that's a pretty long time. Um, so in the second year of Asa, Nadab, the son of Jeroboam, begins to reign. And in the third year of Asa, Baasha, the son of Ahijah, begins to reign. That means Nadab didn't last very long. So there's a, in that course of one year, there's a civil war, a whole family gets assassinated, uh, all, all kinds of change, and in the north there's all this churning, all this turmoil, and we're going to be going through several kings in the north. The other defining thing is when it says who they walked in the way of. So Nadab walked in the way of his father and in the sin in which he made Israel to sin. He walked in the way of his father. That's why we sang, Christ be my leader. We want to walk in the way of Christ. Uh, where is Christ leading us? What does, what does Jesus want us to do? That, that sounds childish perhaps to say that, but who are you going to follow? You're walking your own way, you're going to say, I'm, gonna, I'm making up my own uh, rules, and uh, I'm not following anybody, which is untrue. No matter who you are, when you say you're not following anybody, you still are following different things you picked up from here or there that you're going to please or, or imitate somebody that you admire. Who are you following? Who are you imitating? I, I was a little jealous of Pastor Rago got to talk about Asa last week because he, uh, and the idea that he was a good king and he removed certain idols, and he rebelled against his own mother, and he, he himself was born of incest from his father and his grandmother. So his mother was his also, also his grandmother. He rebelled against her and, and put her out and cut down the Asherah pole that she had made and burned it down in the Kidron Valley and disgraced it. And, uh, and that was a great thing, but he didn't take out the high places. Things are difficult and mixed. People worshiping on the tops of hills and mountains, setting up a little altar there, uh, their worship there was mixed. And until the temple was built, Many people had been worshiping in high places. Solomon, that we talked about, was sacrificing uh, at the high place at Gibeah, and that was where he went with, made lots and lots of sacrificial, sacrificial offerings. Um, so sometimes it was the God of Israel that was being worshipped there. The problem with the high places was, those were places that had historically been where these false gods were worshipped. Baal, in particular. Asherah, Baal's consort, wife, what, uh, was worshipped in the groves in a, in a little clearing in the trees with, a, with an Asherah pole, which is a sexual symbol, by the way. Baal was worshipped on the hilltops because he was a god of thunder and lightning. And, and then the Israelites came in and they just took over those hilltop places and sometimes worshipped the true god. But of course, you know, it fits. Baal was worshipped here sometimes. All oh, those thunder, thunder clouds up here. Sometimes prayers and offerings were offered to Baal. And then over time, if you're worshipping unfaithfully, it moves. And so, uh, in, the, in the southern kingdom, it's back and forth. Kings who are trying to do what's right, but uh, not, not so good. And in the north, it's kings who are wholly given over, completely given over to false gods and false worship. And so God fulfills now uh, the, the threat that he made, the curse that he gave to the house of Jeroboam, uh, that they are completely destroyed. And, and the kingdom is handed over to the next king, 
Baasha, the son of Ahijah, uh, not Ahijah the prophet, a different Ahijah. And he's going to reign for 24 years, but he too will do what is evil in the sight of the Lord and walk in the way of Jeroboam. So often in the northern kingdom, they'll say, so-and-so walked in the way of Jeroboam. And in the southern kingdom, the, the, the uh, best thing you could say about a king was that he walked in the way of David. But uh, not so many. We need to understand people are good kings or bad kings in different ways. We'll come across Israelite kings who are great kings in the northern kingdom economically or militarily. Very successful and their people thrive. They prosper. But they are awful kings in terms of, in terms of their worship. And so in God's eyes, they're bad kings. We have had good kings too, or good presidents good governments that make us a lot of money but which are unfaithful to God. And we have had uh, some who are faithful to the Lord but not very competent. Um, and of course it's all mixed because we have presidents and legislators and just judges and, and uh, it's a whole system. And parts of it can be good sometimes and bad other times. So God's word simplifies things for us by saying, here's what good and bad is. And there's wars, and there's economics, and there's plagues, and there's different things that go on. But the good and bad is what the Lord wants. It's following in the Lord that, fi that, that people find what is good. We need to look at our lives that way as well. Recognize that we may be looking at the economy, we're looking at inflation, we're looking at, um, I don't know, whatever, whatever else you, you want to pick as a metric for whether this is a good government or a bad government, whether we went to war or not, or something like that, whether we won or lost, that sort of thing. But the, the heart of whether we are doing good, whether we are uh, a good nation, is whether we are following the Lord. So good pastors and bad pastors, you know, some may build buildings and some may uh, draw crowds, but a good pastor and a faithful congregation is one that is seeking the will of Jesus. Uh, Christ is their leader. And regardless of what the budget looks like, that is what you in your home, in your life, we in our congregation, and all of us in our nation, that is what we should desire. That determines which column we go in, the good ones or the bad ones, whether we're with Jesus. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, this was a jumbled and confusing devotion. Our lives are like that. Lord, good and bad all mixed up together. And sometimes we say we, we want to do good things and, and we express it with not very good words. And, and other times we, we, are, we look good and we're saying things well, but the heart of what we're doing is wrong. Lord, grant that we may be focused upon you. We may search your word. That we may come to you in prayer. That we may seek your will and not our own. Guide us by your Holy Spirit as, as individuals, as families, as a congregation, uh, as a nation. Guide us by your Holy Spirit. So that when a, a history may be written someday, People will say whatever else they did, they were following the Lord. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. And we want to pray too, keeping your prayers. Joel Eden, our brother in Christ, he has a call to Franklin. St. Lorenz? St. Lorenz, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I'm selfishly hoping he stays down here because he's a pretty interesting partner in ministry. And uh, uh, 
but we shall see where the Lord leads and the Lord provides for his church. So, God be with you today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. I almost didn't remember that. The wedding. We have a wedding brain.